Okay, 3-2, representing functions. So we're going to have to, like we did representing relations in the last section, talk about functions. And if I've posted a link to this on Google Classroom, probably not a bad idea to go check this out, because I think they have some nice, um, simple examples here to put some real meaning behind this. So a relationship in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. So this means that each x would have only one y. You would not have an x giving you two different y values. So this would be a function. This would not be a function. Because you wouldn't have two outputs. And if I think about, like, you know, somebody at age 17, if they're 17 years old, they're only going to be one height. Maybe they're, like, six foot tall. It's not like somebody would be, at age 17, both six feet and five foot three inches at the same time. So that would be a function. That would be an example of a function. And there's most real-world problems kind of only give you one output for each input. So when we look at these identifying functions problems, where we're told to identify whether something is or isn't a function, and where we're told to explain, let's look at this and take a look at all of the x's. So here's negative 4 as an input, and I only get one y. So with your pencil, go ahead and tag this as x, and uh, if I look at negative 1, negative 1 only gives me one output of negative 6. 1 gives me only one output of negative 6. And it doesn't matter that the same y matches two of these x's, because that's not the definition. I can only have x going one path from left to right. So 3 goes just to 11. So we're going to say, yes, a function only one y for every x. If you need to get caught up and write that down, go ahead. If I wanted this to suddenly magically not become a function or it was not a function, it would have to look like this. 3 could go down and give me two results, so if three gave me two outputs for only one input, then it would become something that is not a function. And I think that'll help us look at this table in a second. Okay, I look at negative three, and I get one output there, and I scan through. Do I see the value of negative three again? I don't. So in my head, I'm kind of checking this off and moving on. Now I'm looking at two. I scan up, I scan down, and whoops, here we have another value of 2. Which means that if this was a mapping, and I had 2 here, and then I had all my y values over here, 2 could give me 5, 2 could also give me 4. And so because I get 2 outputs, I'm going to say no, not a function. That's ION. And then I would say two outputs for one X. Or I could say more than one Y for every. More than one Y for every X. Oops, that was supposed to be a period. Cool. And jumping ahead, now we got something that's presented to us as ordered pairs. And let's be more thorough on this, but you will definitely be able to do these um, without this supporting step. Here's my x, here's my y. I'm turning it into a table. Negative 2, 4, 1, 5, 3, 6. Pause and get caught up if you need to. 5, 8, 7, 10. And uh, this kind of takes care of my whole tracking issue of having to look at all my x's. And the whole point being is none of these x's repeat. So yes, this is going to be a function. Only one y for every x. 
You can describe this as input and output. It's up to you. So yeah, there's three problems on identifying functions, and hopefully you feel sort of comfortable with what this is, and the wording definitely can be tripping you up, but we're going to do another look at uh, what functions are um, in the next video that I think will help you solidify your understanding that there's only one y for every x, meaning that each x input only gives you one y and not multiple y's.